Alright everyone, in this video I'll be doing a review of Kubuntu version 14.04, another long-term support release, but this one's not directly supported by Canonical. Now, I'm already using this as my main system, and I've been doing so since the beta 2, and I have to say it's worked absolutely fantastic! It's worked perfectly, completely different to Ubuntu, which crashed and lost some of its features. But it has left me with a bit of a question, because what you're seeing here on my desktop is not how it looks at all. I've customised it quite a bit. So I'll be showing you some of what the default version of Kubuntu looks like. But to start with, some of the new features that we have. Well, KDE has been uplifted to version 4.13. Nepomuk has now been renamed to Baloo. And its search functionality has been integrated a bit differently now into Dolphin. We've now got the panel on the left-hand side there, where you can search for different types of files and look at recently accessed documents. Now, I've heard there's been a few issues with that for some people. For me, it's worked okay. Yeah, I've read about uh, where it's been generating sort of gigabytes worth of database data. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, my system has about 40 megs worth of data generated there for... God, however many files I've got here, tens of thousands, I don't actually know. <clears throat> anyway, there's a new driver manager that so looks a bit uh, fancier now and more suited to the KDE desktop. And one other significant new feature is this KDE Connect. I'm absolutely loving this one. What it does is uh, connected my Android phone to now output some of the alerts onto the desktop. So like outputs, text messages, and phone calls, straight up there to the desktop. And to demo it working, let's get my house phone, and if I just dial it, my mobile number. There you go. Pretty good. Now normally it will associate the contacts with the phone numbers there. It's only because I haven't added myself onto my phone, that's why it's not working. So. But yeah, I'm really liking that feature. So let's take a look what else there is. So this is the default view of Kubuntu. So up here on the desktop we have space for shortcuts to applications. Bottom left hand side here we've got the kickoff application launcher. Which you can change to the classic style if that's what you prefer. So I can just right click and then go switch to classic menu style. It's a bit more like Windows XP. Then over here on the bottom right hand side we've got shortcuts to showing the desktop, notifications, which in this case is updates available for my system. That's the update manager. Got a clipboard manager, sound and volume control, network manager, which has changed slightly in this latest version of Kubuntu. Got some other notifications, time and calendar, and the cashew for editing the panel and adding widgets to it. So that's the way of adding widgets. Um, we do get uh, a reasonable selection here. There are more available through the Moon Software Center, or Moon Discovery as it's now called. And I'll come on to that in a moment. So yes, the updates available are for the kernel at this point in time, which is a few days after the release. Well, the view here in VirtualBox does make the fonts look quite nice and presentable. So if I go over to System Settings, in the Application Appearance, into Fonts, we can see, yeah, it does look all quite nice. But let me just switch. But if I go across to the main operating system and open something like Synaptic Package Manager, you can see the fonts don't look quite so nice. Now the reason for that is because of the hinting issues. So we open up the System Settings here, and once again, yeah, go to Application Appearance, into Fonts. You can see I've got a similar sized font. If I go into Configuring, I've changed the hinting style from Medium down to Slight. Just to demonstrate the difference here. System Settings, Anti-Aliasing. In fact, you've just got to set it to Enabled and Configure. Use Subpixel Rendering, RGB and Slight. That's one way of improving the settings there. But by default, that's one issue with Kubuntu. Looking here at the memory usage, well, on my real system, okay, yeah, that's pretty bloated at 3 gig. But at the basic usage, it started about 700 meg and then dropped to around 400 meg. So actually, I found it slightly lighter on memory than Ubuntu was. 
Funny old thing that. Now as good as I thought this KDE Connect was initially, I found that it doesn't pair by default with my phone. I've actually got to go into the phone and repair it. Now it could be an issue of the Android version of my phone because it is quite low. I think I've only got Android version about 4 or 4.1. What else to say with the system? Well, it's very nice with the integration of KDE. As we've seen there, even some of the less used applications like Drive Manager have actually been integrated quite nicely. While I wait for that to open, I'll go and uh, demonstrate the Moon Discover, the Moon Software Center. And even that looks quite nice. Now I don't want you to think that it comes with a default dark theme because if you, as you've seen there with the system I've got in VirtualBox it's actually the light theme that's being used. And I've done things like narrowing the scroll bars. So yeah, I've customised it quite a bit. Okay, it's a bit slow to respond here while I'm recording. I've noticed that some features aren't working here like the click to minimise. It seems to pop straight back up. It, it's purely while I'm recording. It works absolutely fine whilst I'm actually using the system for real. So within Moon Discover we've got like, application ratings and reviews. It's very similar to how we'd find in the Ubuntu Software Center. I think we've got access to the pay for applications as well. Oh, blimey. First time I've had a crash. <laughs> what? You're kidding me. And the only crashes I've had have been with Cadian Live, the video editor. Because that's... Uh, <laughs> Not exactly the most reliable tool here. When you start getting into adding multiple effects in one go, it uh, does start to get a bit unreliable. And what was I about to do? I've pretty much forgotten here. Oh yeah, I was clicking on sources. Ah, it appears I found a bug. I suppose the best method of checking here would be if I went across to the VirtualBox system, click on sources, and actually we find that's working perfectly fine. So clearly it's an issue from my beta 2 system. I'm missing some of the packages. Phew, that's a relief. It's my fault for having a beta 2 release. By the looks of it, at some point I will need to reinstall the system. But without much more to talk about it, really, uh, let's uh, go and take a look at some of the pre-installed applications that we get. So under education there, yeah, nothing much, we'll get to those in a moment. Graphics. So we've got just the image viewer and uh, a few other simple applications there. I'm not really a fan of Gwenview. And what I've gone and done is replaced it with the Mirage image viewer. It's got more the features that I need for an image viewer. Okay, under internet, as you can see we've got Firefox for the web browser, KTorrent for the torrent client, and for the email, Kmail. So we don't even get the default KDE browser anymore of Reconk. I seem to remember it used to have the Firefox browser installer in Kubuntu. Under multimedia, so we've got Amrock audio player, and Dragon for the video player. Under Office, we've got partial suite of LibreOffice version 4.3. I think really my conclusion of Kubuntu is that uh, while it's a very nice implementation of KDE, there are more simpler versions of KDE, like Solid K. Although a new user could pick it up, I think it takes quite a steep learning curve to get the best out of the desktop. So here's what I thought of Kubuntu 14.04. So it's an excellent implementation of KDE, and the choice of the applications that they've got has a real nice look and feel of KDE desktop about it. Even some of the GNOME applications work quite well as well, in looking and feeling like a KDE app. And KDE Connect is a really cool new feature. But on the downside though, it's quite a steep learning curve for new users. So perhaps if you're a new user to KDE, I would actually look at something like Solid K or Netrunner first. Could be a bit easier. And there's still the issue there with font hinting. For a few tweaks, I've got it working quite nicely now on the KDE apps, but it doesn't work so well on some of the GNOME apps. I need to look into that a bit further. But overall, I've given it 82%. So thanks for watching. See you all later.